Hey, welcome back to my channel. This one was a request from my nephew. He's like, hey, you know what would be cool? You could make me, and I'm like, what's that? And he's like, how about a little sign with the Def Leppard logo on it? And without any forethought, I'm like, yep, that sounds good. And so I got home, got designing, and you know, the Def Leppard has that 1980s-ish font to it or whatever, where you have real sharp edges and everything. And, and uh, so anyway, I printed it up. And this is what I ended up with. So this is the pattern for the Def Leppard sign. And I got worried because, man, look at this. If you've cast before, you can tell these little holes on the, on the uh, P and the R over here, and then the D up here. Those aren't very friendly for casting. That's like a sand magnet where sand just wants to go in it and say, I found my home and never come out. So anyway, one of the ways that I thought I would try and move this forward and, and not have so many problems is, I, I put the primer on a little thick, and that's why you don't have, you have a little bit of rounded, you don't have perfectly flat letters, because I put the primer on thicker and hoping to round the edges out next to the letters, and hopefully the sand won't stick as much. Um, the other thing too, everything just sharp edges, and uh, that's not so great for sand casting. And then to top it off, I decided to really do myself in, and, and wreck myself, and make it really thin. So there's quite a few things going against me on this sand casting and we're going to try and work them out and see how far we get. So uh, stick with me and here we go and let's go pound some sand. All right, here we go. It's like business as usual, putting the baby powder on the board and I'm putting talcum powder on the part and I'm trying to really get that talcum powder in there. All right, now I'm laying the facing sand and watch it. This is where I'm going to run into a problem. My first problem. And there I go, I cracked the sand. And we're gonna see what happens when you crack the sand and you think you put sand back down and keep going again, because it actually does create a problem. I always uh, tilt the board now so my pattern doesn't fall out. It makes it a lot easier, because man, I hate that when the pattern falls out and then you have to surgically try and re introduce it into the sand without causing any more problems. The pattern that I'm using doesn't have very good draft angles on the side of it, so I'd figure since it's so thin, I'd just go ahead and put it on the belt sander and take care of it then. In this video, I decided to really abbreviate the packing of the sand mold just because I have done it in so many of my other videos that the, I don't feel there's need to go through and explain everything about packing the uh, cope and the drag and putting the sprue in there. If you want to go further in depth with that or understand what's happening, I do have other videos where I go slower and explain that as I'm packing the mold up. putting the basin in and cutting it over to the sprue. That way the uh, aluminum has a nice flow over and a waterfall effect so it doesn't pull air in with it. And again, just blowing a little sand out of there with the air gun. So this is one way to get around a thin part. Just put a lot of uh, gates on it or, or channels on it and that way the aluminum has a better chance at running all over the mold. If I would have just had one gate and had it running in the mold, I think it would have uh, poured short and the aluminum probably would have frozen up before it got all the way through the mold. I'm putting the air vents at the corners of the mold. It just makes sense because that should be the, some of the last spots that the mold fills up with aluminum. Again, just blow all the sand out. That's really important. Otherwise, those little sand grains will fall back down into your uh, cavity and end up causing pitting into your casting. You can see there's a little bit of tear out. I just showed on the pattern that it actually pulled sand out into the holes where I thought it was going to pull in, just like I talked about in the introduction of the video. Here, I'm just showing I'm putting parts back in that I use from other castings and, and remelting them down. One thing that's great about casting is you can always reuse your scraps.
The crucible being bright red like that tells me that the aluminum is pretty close to where it should be. So I went ahead and took the temperature and as I read the temperature, it came up a little low. Um, and that was because the aluminum that I just added previously took the heat out of it to remelt the, the new aluminum. So even though the crucible looks like it's ready to go, the aluminum inside is still a little cool to go ahead and pour. I need the aluminum kind of hot because one, the pattern's thin, and two, I need to be able to pull it out and reset some camera angles before I do the pour. So now I'm just gonna let it heat up some more. Perfect, it's at 1500, so I got a little bit of time for it to cool down. It's gonna be a certain temperature, huh? Yeah, for it to work best, right now it's too hot, which is good because it gives me time to work. Let's get him to draw us one last time. All right, so here we go. Let's see how it turns out. That looks pretty decent. So far, it looks like the aluminum made it all the way to the corners of the triangle. That's a good sign, so it's not a short pour. Service finish looks pretty decent too. And you can see in the P's, there's a little bit of sand stuck in there in one of the D's. There's the back side, so you can see the channels were made to get the aluminum to spread out more over the thin pattern. And because I have a mill, it'll be easy to take that off. Here's the pattern so we can compare it to the actual casting. This is where, when I was packing the sand, it cracked on me. And that's what caused some of the problems. Here's the pattern with the sand stuck in it. That's not good either, because it ended up casting weird. You can see the edges. There wasn't a draft angle on the pattern, so I figured I'd just put it on the belt sander and give it a sanding. Now you can see the part a little closer. I wanna point out some defects with it. So you can see like a double print or 
I don't know what you'd call it, but that's because the sand cracked and it ended up making it look like the side of it doubled rather than just a nice um, casting. Also, you can see that the E deformed a little bit because of the cracked and it's not deformed on the pattern. Um, there's from the picture where the sand got stuck inside the peas. You can also see it got stuck in the D up there, but it must have fell out of the pattern when it came out of the mold. And little sand got stuck on the sides, and so when it casted, it just uh, went right there and caused a problem. And there's the pattern and the casting next to each other, so you can get an idea of what they look like and how well it reproduced. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you like my video and you're not a subscriber, go ahead and give me a subscribe button hit, and I would greatly appreciate that. Again, um, maybe this wasn't the best way to cast it, or maybe I didn't think of the best way to cast it. If you have any ideas, leave them in the comments section. Also, I was thinking maybe I should have cut this out of plate aluminum, and since I have a graphics cutter, I could make a stencil and do some electrochemical etching on it or sandblasting on it and, and end up with a lot sharper lines that look a lot cleaner and not as messy as a casting. So uh, thanks again. Thanks for watching my video, and uh, hope to see you next time. Thanks again.